So now what we're performing is a fail safe. Um, we're killing the other system. This one is on like if it was in backup mode. And as you can see down here, it says zero, zero at the compressors. So the compressors are not on engaged at all. And if you could see the mirror identical, if we had it hooked up over at the other screen over there, you would see the other three air handlers. And coming back, you can see we just turned off system number one. So as the temperature goes up in the room, it'll kick in the other system and you'll see the, the compressor come in. And as you can see, there's one hell of a light mode in here. So we got all, there's no lack of load. So we just gotta wait for the temperature to kick up. And in a few minutes, that was, uh, we're figuring out some alternative temporary mode. So never mind uh, Sparky's uh, extremely dangerous and fatal high voltage, uh, 24 volts here, but a uh, contactor that is being used as nothing but a little tiny relay. But, but it's what I had in the vehicle. I didn't have a, a little tiny low voltage relay. So I used a big phaser. Oh, there they go. It came on. One, one came on. So right now the load just went up enough that one of the two compressors in the heat recovery unit up on the roof, it's only requiring, you know, roughly 30 hertz, half the drive of one compressor to handle that whole load right now. But as the room slowly creeps up and it has more of a demand because we turned off the other system, you'll see this compressor go up, up, it'll keep ramping up and then it'll kick in compressor number two. When it kicks in compressor number two, compressor number one will go down. And what it'll do is it'll split the load between the two compressors and have a, you know, never stress any one compressor out. And what it does is it counts the hours on every compressor and on every system. And when we have this other system up there, it'll literally rotate compressors and systems to keep the equal amount of runtime on all the compressors. So it's not always like compressor number one coming up. And then only when it has a higher demand, it starts kicking the compressor. No, it actually starts flipping flop back and forth when it counts down a certain amount of hours. And the idea with inverter systems, you never ever run them all the way 100% all the time. It's okay when a heat wave comes in and you have 105 degrees and it has to go uh, say 80 hertz, 90 hertz, it has to do you know, 115% more than what it was rated for, for a day or two through a heat wave, that's fine, that's normal. These were meant to operate at over their capacity for short emergency durations of times. So that's within their capacity and how they're supposed to operate. But the whole entire idea is when you operate a motor roughly 50%, 80%, 70% of its rated load, its efficiency starts multiplying on how efficient the motor actually operates instead of overwinding them or spinning them up out of especially inverter driven motors. Inverter driven motors, if you need say five tons of load all the time, day and night, you do not get an inverter system and run it at full bore five tones. You become less efficient than if it was a regular system. You plan your system and spread out the load so you never run them all the time uh, full bore. And that's what we're accomplished here. Now we're, we've just proven that in an emergency when the other system, if it ever went down, the next system kicks in. And uh, some of the tests we perform throughout our duration of doing slight modifications and tweak of a system is continuously testing the backup and redundancy systems. All right guys, catch you later.